Hello, you beautiful souls, and welcome back to Catching Waves Yoga with me, Leslie. I hope you guys are doing really well, and um, I'm excited that you're here. Sorry that it's apparently been three months since my last post. If you guys haven't picked up on other videos, I do have ADHD. I'm going to blame it on that this time. Uh, that's just something that I've always struggled with, this consistency in my life. Uh, I can do it. It's just really hard to build into a routine with something that I'm not very consistent in anyways. So I hope you guys are okay with my infrequent posts and my random posts that are usually coming when the inspiration hits, um, because obviously that's, I think that's more important. Um, but I want to talk to you guys really quickly about a couple things to do with your mindset, especially your mindset with having a rare medical condition that is really invisible, right? I mean... In some cases, if you've seen um, my update videos, you, you could see that it was very visible um, when I had some of the most intense swelling going on. But most of the time, we don't see it. We don't see the nerve pain. We don't see the, the burning sensation. We, we feel it. We feel it through our head, through our neck, through our shoulders, through your spine, through your arms, right? And sometimes it can be really difficult to communicate that to others or we think that others think we're making it up. Um, and that's a pretty big thing that I just want you to be aware of. Yes, we have this. Yes, it is real. You don't have to have others believe you as long as you know, and as long as your doctors eventually believe you, because we know we've kind of been through hoops with the doctors. Um, but what I do want you guys to take away from today is uh, having a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. Now, I'm a teacher. You guys might know that other than a yoga instructor, I am an art teacher. Uh, so I really do a lot when it comes to just what our brains are doing and uh, the fixed mindset, growth mindset is something big in education, just trying to help understand how students learn. But I think it's really prevalent in just understanding yourself. Um, we could also equate it to the victim mindset or not victim mindset, the I cans versus I can't. Um, and I think it's really important to first evaluate yourself. Are you playing the victim? Are you always saying you can't do something? Um, and I think it's easy to start to say, I can't do something when you feel intimidated or you feel like it might cause pain and it just becomes easier and easier to just say, I can't versus try and see what happens. Um, and I will say for a very long time, I was in the, I can't, I won't do this right? You have to know your boundaries, but I think it's really important for you to also remind yourself that the more you don't, the more you get stuck, right? So if you are just always in pain and you never get off of your chair, your body is going to begin to literally mold to the positions that you're in. So getting up and moving is extremely important. Even if you're in pain, it's so important to do that right? So just make sure that you're, you're really monitoring your brain and asking yourself, am I in pain? Am I not in pain? Am I capable of doing this thing? Or am I truly not capable of doing this thing? And just from my own personal experience, um, recently I have gotten back into weightlifting. Um, so I had that tongue tie release done back in August. It is now February and I am still living life amazingly. And truly because of that experience, I'm now able to do things that I once thought I couldn't do ever again. So I'm weightlifting and I'm doing things like upright rows, you know, where you're pulling your arms and the weight up. And, you know, in the past that could have easily caused a flare up. And now I am coming at it with a different approach of, oh, my body is changing and I am capable of doing some of these things. And so I just monitor you know, maybe one week it's, I'm only using five pound dumbbells in each hand. Maybe the next I try 10 and I'm like, oh, nope, I feel a little sensation in my collarbone area. Not doing that yet. Let's go back down. Right. And I think when you, you begin to try things that you're a little uncomfortable with, you monitor your body because you know your body the best of anybody, then it becomes a lot easier for you to want to experience life more, lift those weights, carry your groceries, carry your child, right? Whatever that might be that is that importance for you. Um, so 
I just wanted to kind of talk to you guys about that because I know sometimes it's so easy to, to let this condition stop you in its tracks, whether you have thoracic outlet syndrome, whether you have costochondritis, whether you have both, or you have a whole shebang of all the other things, because it's never just one, right? I want you to just look at your mental health and ask, are you playing the victim? Are you stuck in that fixed mindset? Or do you have a growth mindset of, I want to heal. I want to get out of this. And I'm going to work really hard, even if it's baby steps to get there. Because I think once you can start to literally put yourself in check and hold yourself accountable, that's when the healing and the growth begins. And I, I will tell you, I had to do that many times to myself. I know how hard it is to get stuck in those negative mindset ruts with the, I can't do anything. I'm always in pain, or maybe you are having a flare up and you're so focused on that pain. You forget to focus on anything else. And that's when I will just say, remember that not every single inch of your body is in pain. Your attention might be on the main area of pain. And this is when it becomes a practice to focus on those areas that don't feel so terrible, right? So for example, if my collarbone is aching or my forearm is burning or my fingers are numb, that's where the attention is. What are your toes doing? What does your hair feel like? How does your ear feel? And I know that sounds so silly, but when we can take the attention away from the areas that are causing us that pain, our brain can relax. And then you'll notice your body can start to relax. Uh, doing breath work is really amazing when you're really in the thick of it and you're, you're emotionally depleted and you're physically exhausted and hurting. Lay down in a comfortable spot, even if it's just in your bed and just close your eyes and take a deep breath in for four counts. Hold it. And then exhale for four, six, eight, whatever feels comfortable, just let it out and do that for like 10 breath cycles. And just notice your mind is going to relax. Your body is going to relax and that pain is not going to be so prevalent. So I just wanted to um, share this with you. It's just been something that's been on my mind. You, you always get to choose what you get to focus on. And it's not easy. It is a practice. But I think the more you practice it, the easier it becomes to not be so much in pain or not to focus on that pain. The easier it becomes to want to experience all those joys in life again. And the easier it becomes to just move through each day with a little less stress, a little less on your plate, because you're just excited that you're growing and you're changing and you're healing. So I'm going to leave you with that today. I hope it is inspiring you in some way, shape or form, or if anything, just a reminder that it, it does start here. And I'm just going to leave you with that. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.